What is up, Obscure Mike people? It's Bark coming to you from the uh, the, the shit shack uh, as of right now. We're going to call it shit shack. And uh, I'm holding a microphone. But there's a reason. There's a reason why I'm holding the microphone. This is going to be a bit of a dual review. I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, Amplitank SC1 from FiFine. Little yellow different. No, little audio interface. Uh, camera angle is not going to be the best on this, but... We're, we're going to get you there. That's what she said. We're, we're going to get you there. So we're going to talk about the SC1. But more importantly, this is going to be a noisy video. My studio is trashed. Like, absolutely trashed. I'm in process of getting it back to the way I want it. But to do that, we need a boom arm. We're going to need a boom arm. A boom arm. We're going to need one. So, Fifine was nice enough to send me their low-profile boom arm. Which, uh, spoiler alert, I've already used a little bit before I moved. Um, it, and I was pretty impressed. Some kind of feedback coming back to me. Um, not sure what that is. Hopefully it's nothing off the walls. I'm not real sure. Because this is the angle I've set up for myself. And I am speaking kind of at a wall, so I'm a little bit worried there. Anyways, Five Find sent over the low profile boom arm. And I have discovered that I am going to start using it over my Vivo boom arm. I know I've been using the Vivo boom arm for years, but I've got this new setup and I wanted it to be cleaner. Man, I got to figure out what that noise is reflecting. Something coming back at me, 100%. Hopefully not on the video, but I definitely hear it. Let me go ahead and set this microphone down. Now, I'm going to go ahead and crank up the volume here just for the sake of you being able to hear me pretty well. Again, I don't have my dual camera set up in motion yet. I have a lot of things left to do, but I'm going to unbox this. I mean, my studio has been a mess for a long time, but right now it's just stressful. Okay, I am unboxing the Fifine boom arm. It's not going to be your typical unboxing, but the boom arm's right here. Like, seriously, there it is. I'll show you more about that in a minute. Inside the box, you're also going to get some documentation about the boomer. Uh, boomer. Tell you what now. Tell you what now. I got a goddamn boomer right there in the studio. Tell you what. Box. We got a box. Inside that box, when you open that box, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's one of the reasons I really am liking this thing lately. So, we've got our mount for our desk and it is heavy and it has a arm it has like a full handle tightener non-tightener i mean this is this is just like it this is high quality we've even got an allen bolt here so we can tighten in the boomer now not only do we have this thing here which i'm gonna hook up and try to show you we got more. I'm going to get a little sweaty because I don't have the AC in here. I figured by almost November I wouldn't need it. Turns out I was wrong. I need it. Ball head. Yeah. So this goes on the microphone arm. And we've got a quarter 20, 3 8 and 5 8 here. Like seriously, that's we've got the quarter 20 barely threaded at the end of the 3 8 And then we got... A five eighths and you know fully adjustable you can actually almost take that whole yeah you can take that whole thing off to a quarter 20 so really we've just got a quarter 20 adapted to wherever you want to go and yes the ball head it does articulate all over the place which makes me happy the boom arm itself is extremely minuscule there's not much here folks but I decided I wanted a cleaner setup in the studio. This is going to give me that cleaner setup. Look at that. Would you look at it? This goes here. Right in. So desk. Articulating. Oh, it's hard to, it's hard to. I just want my studio to be clean. <laughs> Cracking up. Uh, yeah, so this goes, maybe that's all the way down. Okay. Yeah, man. There it is. So we've got this angle here. We're in. We've got cable management here. 
So cable management, you just put the plastic in, you slide it down, run your cable, same thing with the other side. Like I said, we got this holding the desk. We got this that just, I mean, we can go down, we can go way up. Trust me, this thing has proved to be a lifesaver. Now, I'm gonna take off the mount, and we're, we're gonna to get to all this, but the articulating ball head, you've got a, better against my white forehead there, shite and bright and shiny like powder. So yeah, you loosen this sucker up until it goes on. You almost have to loosen it to the point to where you lose it. Like to where the, the bolt comes all the way out, but not quite. Okay, so we're on, we're clamped on. Now we tighten it, here it is. So you got your articulating ball head. You can, you know, there's a lot of adjustability here. And I'll show you that in a minute. But I'm gonna get it, put it on my desk. Okay, so I'm back and I've got the five fine boom arm wired up and ready to go on my new desk setup, uh, which I'm I'm pretty excited about. You know, it's the change can be good and I feel like this change is gonna be good and also that ringing I was hearing, that guitar, that guitar sitting beside me, voice echoing out of the hole, good times. Phone footage now, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at this boom arm. All right, so in my setup, I wanted to go under, under the monitor here. And here's the, the five fine boom arm going well under. And easily, easily, easily to me, easily to me. We can go down. We can go up. We can go up really high. I mean, we this this arm right here, this thing is amazing. The ball head, really good. That connection point is absolutely solid and awesome. This thing is sturdy, solid, good to go. Crimson Ghost. Now I do recommend a quick release because it, it just gives you a little more extension and it's nice to have but the ball head holds really nicely got that tightened in there the cable management I'm not using yet but just just to be able to come out under my monitor like this and and do so many different things and I can when I want to put it away like I, I can put it all the way away like I, I really couldn't do that with the Bebo so Pretty happy about that now I, I just got some sag when I got here but this thing does come with an allen wrench and I can I can tighten and I can tighten it pretty well there is zero sag now so now I have to give quite a bit of force here mm. yeah no no sag I can come way down no sag a little tightening, good to go. There's the the Allen point, but you can tighten everything into place. Everything can be tightened in place. Honestly, I absolutely love this thing. The only thing it's gonna take me some time to figure out is uh, is simply how far I want to be away from the camera. You know what I got to do with my mics to achieve it. But man, this boom arm is absolutely fantastic. Now again, with it tightened, like I can't just adjust super easily, but at the ball head I can, at the mic I can. If I wanted to loosen that first shaft, I could. Um, but I mean, it's still, I've got plenty of play. I can still move it quite a bit. It's a lot easier to go down once you tighten it than it is to go up. But either way, it's still not hard. It's just about adjusting on the fly. Really love this boom arm. I, I'm going to switch to it for a while. My uh, my buddies over at the Real and Raw Sports Podcast wanted my last Vivo boom arm. I sold them the first two. They wanted the last one. I obliged. They've got it. 
I'm going to roll with the five fine. I, minimalistic, man. I want to be able to just push everything out of the way when I'm done at the end of recording my videos. And so far, so good. The whole time on this video, uh, we've been using the Fifine Amplitank SC1. It's a little $50 interface, USB-C on the back, two quarter inch inputs. And I, I've got to say, been using it. And I got to say, it's pretty simple. I'm going to show you some specs. Now, the dynamic range is super low. The gain range is okay. Uh, I've got it turned up a good bit. Not all the way. I've got it at about 3 o'clock. I've got it at 3 o'clock out of 6 o'clock with the Fifine K669D. That's what this is. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Now, I've got it plugged in, like I said, 3 o'clock. All plastic build, nothing super special. But for 50 bucks you get a really basic interface. The knobs feel, they're solid, there's no wiggle, but everything does seem very cheap. But you don't hear any feedback or input from the plastic casing. It does have four rubber feet on the bottom. It's pretty small, fits in the palm of my hand just like that. The headphone out, I've got good news and eh, not so good news. Not so good news is I had to plug in some 32 ohm Sennheisers. They're uh, working pretty well now with me hitting about negative 12 dB on my readout. But you cannot drive anything really above 32 ohm. I had some 80 ohm Bayer Dynamics in. It did it, but not to my liking. I needed a little more volume without having to crank the gain because you do have a volume knob here, but... You got to have the gain up for 80 ohms or more, and it's up as far as like dangerous clipping levels go. So don't like the headphone out in that sense, but it does seem to provide latency free monitoring. So we don't have that crappy, you know, reverb echo effect going on. So good on you, Fifine, for that one, because that was one of the things they needed to do with their next interface, and they did it. You got monitor outputs on the back. You got an instrument jack here. As you can see, not to mention the XLR output is a combo jack, which is awesome. Overall for 50 bucks, um, I think it's gonna provide the gain that you need to power just about anything. It seems pretty quiet. It is 16 bit 48 kilohertz. So, you know, but it's 50 bucks. It's, it's going to be a contender in that budget interface category with the M-Audio Solo, the Behringer UM2, amongst a few others. And I honestly think it does a pretty good job. I do want to see what it does with an SM7B, of course, because we got to, right? Okay, so now we've got the SM7DB. Now, little couple words here. So a lot of folks, rightfully so, said that the SM7DB was too little too late. And I get that, and I agree to an extent, because a Fethead is only like $50 on Amazon these days. The Clark Technic CT1 is out there. There's other preamps out there. There's preamp cables from Zombie, uh, Zen Audio Zombie Cable. I've got one of those. I've had it for like a year. I need to review it. I, I've got so much stuff in here. But anyways, any who's in. Um, too little too late, maybe, but... Then again, when you own the SM7DB, you can buy just about any run-of-the-mill interface you want for voice and YouTube and podcasting. Music, not so much. But if what you want to do is stuff like what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you could cheap out and go with a cheap interface if you own an SM7DB. And if that interface craps out, you can get another cheap interface. Now, here's what's cool about this. I'm in bypass mode, so I'm using this just as an SM7B no preamp involved, and I don't even have to go 100%, which was a nice surprise. If I go 100%, I have to talk a little quieter, because if I don't, I will get in the clipping range. I don't quite clip, but I'm really close. So I can actually scale that back to about 530 and still get my negative... There we go, that's better. And still get my negative 12 dB that I like to record at, and then just boost a little bit in post. This is really impressive for 50 bucks. I wish it was 24-bit, um, 
but I'm not going to complain. The dynamic range kind of sucks, but for voice podcast stuff like that, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fi fine. <laughs> the studios of pass don't hate me because my jokes are bad. Uh, it's pretty good, honest to God. Um, let's go ahead, just, just for the sake of knowing, just to get a little more out of it, we'll go ahead and turn the bypass off, use the preamp, turn on phantom power to make sure that works, and I'll get the hell out of your hair. Yeah, so I've got the preamp on in the SM7DB. I kind of like just using a switch when I'm using this mic. Now, granted, an inline preamp not connected to a mic makes a lot of sense if you use multiple dynamic mics, but again, if you're just an SM7B person... I still kind of like the SM7DB, even if it is a little late to throw a preamp in there. Uh, now I've got the gain. See that little notch right there? I've got it right at about 11, 11, 15. And uh, with phantom power on, which glows green when it's on. And it's it's fine. It's, it's pretty solid. Pretty solid indeed. Anyways, uh, five fine. SC1 Ampla Tank is out of here. 50 bucks. I think it's great. Uh, the... Boom arm that I'm pretty sure I'm going to use for the rest of my life. That's not true, probably. 52 bucks. It's 52 bucks. And honest to God, I think it's worth it. I want a cleaner setup. I want to be able to go under monitor, under desk. Um, but honest to God, you can almost go over. Not with the SM7B, not quite working out, but you can almost go overhead with this but lo and behold you, you kind of can't you kind of can't not with the sm7b anyways uh thanks for uh sticking it out with me i know i've released some videos throughout this whole move and studio mess uh this is going to change behind me quite a bit quite a bit so be prepared just just for some different visuals nothing major maybe a little more cheesy lighting back there I'm thinking about getting like a black leather couch, something I like to call the casting couch right behind me, um, where my wife tries out for various parts on podcasts and such. My idea, totally original. <laughs> oh, this shack is not just a studio, folks. Where's that crop? Anyways, Mark's out of here. Obscure Mike's is out of here. I'm uh, excited about the future of the channel. I'm excited about the future of the studio. Excited about bringing you more videos uh, from the comfort of what will eventually be a much comfier, happier studio. I watched some football in here, for God's sakes. It was a good time today while I was putting a desk together. I'm happy. I just, just want it to be done. I'm a little impatient, but I will see you guys with a lot. And I mean a lot of obscure products coming up because I've received like five or six just since I moved. That's been within two weeks. And uh, I had a shit ton before that, so... If you're into the whole obscure mics thing, stick around. I have plenty of product to bring enough for the next two years, probably. Really rare stuff, too. Anyways, Mark's out of here. Thank you guys for sticking with me, being with me, hanging with me, commenting with me, uh, you know, uh, uh, rubbing swords with me, all that stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace out.